Captain's Log, March 11, 2016. Yeah, it's me, Captain Logan, making videos on my own YouTube channel. I, well, videos, a video. I've appeared a couple times already this week, and already more than I planned to, given that this is supposed to be my hiatus. But I had to break from my break in order to stop and talk a little bit about the tick announcement, because, first of all, of course, as a lot of you know, the tick is one of my absolute favorite things, and I've been waiting to hear more about this project for almost two years now since it was originally announced that Amazon was supposed to be doing a new live action uh, straight to streaming tick series and here we are 2016 finally getting news about this and it just happened to have it just had to happen while I was taking a break and while the crisis team was taking over for me by the way I have to um, stop and say thanks so much to the crisis team and they've been doing an absolutely phenomenal job in my supposed absence anyway so the news on this is really fascinating and I'm gonna go point by point and talk about all the little pieces of it uh, we got an article from Deadline announcing that there is going to still be a new live action tick series on Amazon, or should I say, a pilot has been ordered. I suppose it's always possible that the pilot will get shot and that Amazon won't like it and pass on it. That's not a thing I've heard of happening with streaming services, but I, I don't know if that works the way network does in every case. What we were told a couple years ago now was that there was going to be a new tick series uh, on Amazon and that Patrick Wharton, that Patrick Warburton had already been signed to it and that was the only thing we knew about it and I talked to an artist who goes to a lot of conventions who claims and this is not a great source or anything I, I don't have any documented evidence about this so, so take this with a grain of salt but my, my source is some random artist that I met at a convention but a guy who was selling a lot of uh, of, of his own uh, artwork and had done a lot of Tick and Patrick Warburton stuff said that he had talked to Patrick Warburton at a convention just a couple months prior to that this was last year and that as of then Patrick Warburton was still talking about this now deadline refers to all of that as rumor territory which I'm surprised by especially and I take that with a grain of salt I don't think it was all rumor ter territory in fact I think at the time that had to have been the news because a it's still Amazon and it is Amazon that's ordered this pilot and B Patrick Warburton is still attached to this project he's just not playing the tick he is a producer on it so that makes me suspicious that the, uh, the artist that I talked to was probably right that Patrick Warburton at the time still thought he was gonna be playing the tick well he's not he's just producing and he and that's because he's on this new comedy for NBC called crowded which I never heard of until I read this article and it's gonna be be a downer, unless of course whoever they pick for the tick ends up being awesome, but it's going to be maybe a downer if that series doesn't make it and then he would have been available to play the tick and Amazon just kind of shuffled their feet and didn't get it together fast enough, but it, it, there, there's, you know, the background of this is very mysterious. I have no idea exactly why it took this long and how much of the very, very little we knew from a couple years ago was even true. But anyway, so my guess, as I said, though, is that this was put on the back burner and that Warburton was expected to be available then. Now he's not, and so his being producer is possibly a, the way that they're... Uh, you know, having having him honor the contract or they're honoring whatever promises they made to him. Who knows? But anyway, his name's gonna be on it, which is really odd. And uh, anyway, like I said, all we knew before was that there was gonna be Warburton. Now, no Warburton, but we already have some casting for this. So uh, we've got an Arthur, and his name is uh, Griffin Newman, who is on something called Vinyl, which I've never seen. But looking at the picture of him in the article, uh, he looks fantastic for it. He looks super nerdy. He looks like he's got potentially that, you know, Arthurish build, and he looks like he could be super socially awkward. So, I mean, just in look alone, and in whatever I can glean from, you know, his 
from that and his eyes and stuff, he looks like he'd, he'd make for a great Arthur. And we also have a casting for Arthur's sister, Dot, who has never been a regular recurring character before. She was recurring in the cartoon show, but, you know, only a few times. And in the live-action series, we saw her once, but... We only had nine episodes for that show. Anyway, I, I am guessing she's probably going to be main cast, considering that we only know of two casting choices. But I am excited that we already know about casting beyond just writing and producing, because that means that it, it looks like a thing that's that where at least the pilot's going to get made. So this looks like a done deal now. It looks like it's very likely to happen unless, again, Amazon were to pass on it. But anyway, uh, she is uh, named Valerie Curry, and she's in House of Lies. Once again, once again, something else I haven't seen, but she has been getting a lot of critical critical acclaim for that and stuff. So apparently, she's a really good actress. I never thought I'd be talking about Dot like this, like, oh, who's gonna play Dot? What's that gonna be like? But anyway, apparently a recurring character, uh, or a, a regular character. The important thing to note that makes it, of course, seem like this is likely to be potentially great is that we have Ben Edlin back producing and writing. And I don't want to see a Tick series where Ben Edlin is in no way whatsoever involved. I'm a little bit nervous, for instance, to see Powerpuff Girls without Craig McCracken. It's it, it's nice that we've at least got Ben Edlin coming to the Tick, and since he's not, since he doesn't have the duties that he had on Gotham, he might be a Available to really show run it and or at least uh, co show run it with uh, the other producer guy that he's got that I guess has worked with him before that I'm not real familiar with. Um, I'm wondering if Barry Sonnenfeld will get to be involved with this at all. His name hasn't come up yet. I'd like to him at least yeah, like I'd like to at least get to see him come in and direct an episode or two. And this is the second project this week that I'm surprised not to see Barry Sonnenfeld's name attached to it all. We've got the 21 Jump Street Men in Black crossover and his and he's not attached to that at all at least with the initial announcement. So a couple of properties that he's been intimately involved with that he's that he's not attached attached to here. It looks like this is going to be a complete re reboot. Like, you're not going to have any of the actors from the original show, but we're also going with automatically what feels like kind of a different sort of um, flavor the premise, and I'm surprised we already have any story stuff at all about this, the premise is, and I love that we're not doing Origin, is that it's the Tick who has, who has amnesia, which, take that with a grain of salt, because salt, the Tick always seems to sort of have some amnesia, and he, he never is all there, and there always seems to be parts of his past that he's just not even able to tap into. So anyway, he has amnesia, and Arthur is thought to be by everybody that he knows schizophrenic because he is swearing up and down that evil is afoot and tr hoofing it with dark gusto and trying to take over the city, and nobody believes him that supervillains or whatever force he's talking about is trying to take over, and so then he and the Tick re Unite, and so it's this kind of reuniting thing, which it sounds like it could it could have been how you bring back the characters from the original live action show and start running with them again, and how you could get away with even having them be older. But something about the way this reads just feels like it could be uh, it's likely to be a little bit more serious. I still obviously really, really goofy and out there and bizarre comedy, but it, but it, it sounds like it has the potential to take itself a little bit more seriously and be a little bit more of a of an adult thing, like a more mature thing, maturely written thing that's a little bit more story-driven than the previous show. I'm getting the sense that this might not be a sitcom like what like what we had before. That just doesn't sound like a sitcom premise. That sounds like a that sounds like a tick premise. You know, it sounds like a, a tick comic premise where you have this situation that breaks status quo beyond just the tick shows up in the city and wants to get started fighting crime. Where there's actually a history for this universe and these characters, and it sounds like it might be more involved. And it sounds like it might be. 
that there might be more of a built-in mythology right out the gate and, and be exploring that stuff. So uh, I'm going to ask some questions now. One of them is that, is, is this going to be a situation comedy? Uh, what kind of a budget is it going to have? Is it going to be an action show like Arrow and Flash and that stuff? Is it going to be that is it going to have that kind of action or is it going to be more of a sitting around and talking in between the action stuff like the sitcom was is this going to be an episodic show a mostly one and done thing where we're maybe you know moving a story along but mostly it's just singular comedic episodes or is it going to be more of a continuing story um i'm also wondering what exactly they're going to have the rights to use are they only going to be able to use comic book stuff and make up their own stuff one of the quotes from this article was that uh, the Tick and Arthur are going to be surrounded by a brand new cast of characters or or by, let me find the exact quote, a new host of characters. So I, I don't know if that means new in that they haven't met them yet because that's, it was, you know, I don't know if that's about the story or, but I would imagine that that's more about the series. So is it that or is it that we're making up a whole bunch of new characters? But Edlin loves to make up new tick characters, by the way. And so he, and he tends to make up people that are uh, just as hilarious and put, and, and he'll make up, you know, gems that you want to see in other iterations later in every iteration he does. So that doesn't scare me or bother me at all. Having said that, there are a number of characters that I would love to see both from comics and the other two shows and that I would love to see adapted and get, get to see continuing, especially characters that were barely there or got like one episode in the live action show that we like the terror that we totally could have done more really cool stuff with or characters in the animated series that would make for great characters in live action but uh, I have written down a list of characters I'd really like to see and most of them are comic book because I think a, a lot of those characters would play a little bit better for a live action, potentially more street level, but I mean, still, I assume, be really absurd and out there and wacky universe. I'm not expecting Thrak or Zog in a show like this. I'm not expecting. I mean, I realize that in Supergirl and Flash and Arrow, uh, you know, a lot of the Berlanti shows, we're seeing a lot of crazy stuff like a walking, talking shark that you never see, think that you would see in live action. So anything's possible. I mean, in this day and age, could you do a live action Chairface Chippendale in a, in a way that it might have been a lot harder to do in 2001? Yeah, I think you probably could, but I don't know if they'll go there. And of course, Chairface is a comic book character and somebody that they would have the rights to if they can do comic book stuff over anything else. And there's no way that they don't have comic book rights for this show. So, uh, but characters that I would love to see, the big one is Barry Hubris. If you're not familiar with the Tick, with the Tick comics, and they, his main, you know, first story was almost directly adapted in the animated series in the Tick versus the Tick. That was one of those, uh, like the Tick versus Jeffrey's Chimmendale, where a lot of that story came directly off the page. Um, Barry is a wannabe superhero who calls himself the Tick, who's this rich guy who just wants to uh, look really cool and powerful and he's all about the gadgets and stuff and his name says it all, Barry Hubris. He's, he's obsessed with himself, he's self-absorbed and he sees the Tick as a challenge to that because he wants to call himself the Tick and that's his superhero name. And what I would love to see since Patrick Warburton is involved in this show and won't be able to be there on a regular basis to play the Tick but might be available every now and again because he's just doing a comedy on NBC, I think it would be a wonderful coup for pa for Patrick Warburton to come in and play Barry Hubris, to play the other tick. I think that would be absolutely fantastic and hilarious coup and the kind of fun stunt casting that I've been enjoying with some of the uh, DC superhero shows where we bring in these these kinds of these kind of uh, legacy actors to play characters that are connected to who they've played before, but it's kind of a pass the torch thing. Or to play, like we just had with, you know, Laura Vandervoort in Supergirl, uh, playing a big villain for the character that they played before, because that, that can be fun sometimes too. By the way, her is Brainiac 8, 
It was fantastic casting. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'd like to see Sewer Urchin in this show. As I said, I'd like to see the Terror. We got him in one episode uh, played by Armin Shimmerman in the first live-action series, which was kind of fun, but he was certainly underutilized, and I'd like to see him as a big bad for a whole season. Uh, Oedipus, Paul the Samurai, uh, the Chainsaw Vigilante, these are all characters from the comics that would be really easy to pull off in live-action, and it would be a lot of fun to see those characters parroting some of the live-action superhero stuff we've had lately that is adapting stuff from the period that The Tick was originally created to parody those same things in comic book form. And I'll get to more of that in just a second. I'd like to see the Red Eye. Uh, he was this creepy, mysterious hitchhiker who had the power to kill people or drive them insane and turn them into slaves by staring at them while he was hitchhiking, and inside that universe, he had his own series of pulp comics, and you could do a fun kind of meta thing with him, potentially, and if it were me, I might even make him the source of the tick's amnesia. I uh, that that would be you know, you know you know potentially fascinating and make him the kind of this you know scary background character sort of like we've been doing lately with the Rat King in the Ninja Turtle comics for IDW. Um, I like to see Big Shot in this again because we we're doing the Punisher now in the live action Daredevil show and it'd be really fun to see the Punisher parody in this show. I'd like to see the Cape Wonder. He's the parody of Superman for the Tick. The big thing from the anime series, if I could only have one, have one character, excuse me, it's late at night, if I could only have one character, it'd be the Breadmaster. I love the Breadmaster, and I feel like he could be used as a parody for a lot of these, like, tech genius cyber terrorist characters. This has the potential to be to fill in this niche that, curiously, we have a lot, you know, we fill a lot, but I don't think we've filled a lot lately, where we have things with, we have super, superhero things with parody elements, but I don't know what the current consummate superhero parody thing really is outside of comics, and we are so inundated and saturated right now with superhero stuff that I think this is a thing that could feel really fresh again. And do, as I said, exactly what we did with comics, but with comics to screen stuff. You know, the animated series did a pretty good job in a lot of episodes of bringing, the, especially with things like Alone Together, with the Galactus parody, with Omnipotus, in doing, uh, in, in kind of parroting animation and comics simultaneously. And it would be a lot of fun to see this show do that with the superhero stuff on uh, in the movies and uh, on television. Television, you know, to make fun of every aspect of superheroes on screen, and especially the way we perceive them, like uh, superhero angst and modern cynicism and the lack of trust that people have in their heroes with the way that we're playing Superman now and how people don't automatically assume he's going to do the right thing because he's so powerful and that kind of stuff. I also think it is incredible that this of all properties is getting a third series. I lost my mind back in 01 when we were getting a live-action version of this. The Tick is so underground. It's based on a comic that was made by a company that's not even a comic book company. New England Comics is a retailer. And we've had two series now and about to have a third, and that is absolutely fascinating to me, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, I don't know that I'll that I could even be really upset if this was terrible because just just the privilege that I've had to get to see two adaptations of this it's a dream come true to get it again and to get a thing that almost certainly if the pilot goes through will get more than nine episodes it's, it's really exciting so if it's bad then and, and it's Ben Edlin so it's hard to imagine that there won't be anything to like because it's the guy who created it and every time he's come back to it he's always still been on his game and it's still his brand of humor and other people have been able to come in and write it but never like Ben Edlin it's, it, it's so his own really unique you know, specific brand of humor that nobody else can completely recreate. And I don't think that he's ever really lost the knack for that. Um, this is also finally the potential, uh, it gives us a, a potential to get new Tick merchandise. There's not even a Tick comic book 
in stores right now. Uh, New England's not making one now. There was a bi-monthly for a while, and it wasn't real popular, so they so they dropped it. And so, again, it's crazy to me that we're making another Tick series off of a character that's not even prevalent anywhere. I mean, he's dead right now, and we're going to get another TV show. It has gone from resurrection of a cult classic to, you know, a cult classic canceled series that only had nine episodes that a whole bunch of people found after the fact. It's like Star Trek, except a lot shorter and I don't think was on syndication anywhere because of how short it was. It's gone from that to possibly looking like yet another cash-in on, on the popularity of superheroes. I mean, it's Patrick Warburton that made that first show so immensely popular. And now that he's not in this, I think that a lot of people are not even going to think to watch it and aren't going to be excited about it and are going to think that it's it's kind of uh, another unnecessary reboot, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of stuff you can do with the tick that we just haven't gotten to see on screen yet. And like I said, a lot of cool characters that could be adapted. Um, I, I think that if Patrick Warburton had been in it, there is, I think there's the potential that a lot of people would have gotten Amazon Prime accounts just to watch it, or might have, and I don't think that's as likely now without him. I also think that the new guy, whoever he is, and it's so weird that we don't have a, a, a pick yet, which is another thing that makes me think that Amazon, all the way up to a certain point, thought that they were still going to be able to use Patrick Warburton, uh... And, boy, it just sounded like the reason they were doing this show was because they got him to sign on. So it's crazy that they're doing it without him. It, it makes me wonder if that's Ben Edlin going, no, please, I really want, want to get to do the tick again. But anyway, so Ben Edlin, um, excuse me, um, Patrick Warburton not being there, this guy is going to have to do everything he can to make it his own and have yet another, you know, a third tick iteration on screen. He can't do a Patrick Warburton. He can't do a Townsend Coleman impression. Uh, for a lot of people, Patrick Warburton is the definitive tick, hands down. Now, I like the animated series version a little bit more, and maybe you can blend those in some way, or maybe this guy can look at the comics and interpret it in another way that makes it feel more comic book somehow and be more of like a direct translation of that, which is not something we've had yet and not something I don't know that audiences will even be prepared for that, but they certainly weren't with Deadpool, so, and that has been incredibly popular, so maybe that's what you do, you know, maybe, maybe you take it directly off the page and you let it be as absolutely insane and off the wall as, as it was, and some kind of, sometimes just plain disturbing. It's, of course, a little bit disappointing that we're not going to have Patrick Warburton, but on the other hand, having a brand new Tick who is going to be able to, from the very beginning, build his own rapport with this new Arthur, it, this might actually be a smarter thing, at least for the quality of the series, but I don't know that people are going to go out of their way to see it, so I guess we'll see how people react to it. And casting is going to be everything with this version of The Tick. But one thing I was concerned about was not having... Uh, the uh, not having Burke playing Arthur and having to get a, a, a new uh, actor playing Arthur to build some kind of a rapport with Patrick Warburton. So this could actually be a really good thing, just going off and doing its own thing. It's exciting. The big thing for me is I'm glad to have more of an excuse to talk about The Tick again. Everybody, thanks as always for watching, and this concludes today's Captain's Log.